friends this is Shruti Joshi and today I am going to talk about wrist joint differential diagnosis. Let's see. First we are going to learn carpal tunnel syndrome. So what is carpal tunnel syndrome? Carpal tunnel syndrome is compression of your median nerve at the carpal tunnel of your wrist due to some inflammation of your flexion, flexor tendons like flexor digitorium profundus superficialis or flexor polysis longus tendon here you guys can notice that this is red color is the inflammation and that is compressing your median nerve this is very common in the age of 35 to 55 years onset is gradual mechanism of injury mostly repetitive activity of the wrist or motion like gripping uh, and the hammering that cause carpal tunnel syndrome or if you are using uh, computers so due to using your mouse uh, repetitively in the defaulting position so due to do that carpal tunnel syndrome is very common on observation we can see the thinner muscle atrophy but no swelling or trophic changes functional problem like patient is not able to carry coffee mug or patient is not able to do uh, making the dough and uh, difficulty in opening the jar difficulty in buttoning their shirt these are the functional problem of the patient let's see symptoms patient will complain that he or she might have burning tingling or numbness on the medial nerve distribution especially at the night time and weakness of the thumb and uh, due to that opposition is also affected aggravating factors like repetitive wrist activities especially flexion position and uh, range of motion that is uh, active range of motion is full and pain free and resisted isometric that is strong and pain free in acute case and weak and pain free especially on the radial side that is affected in chronic cases tenderness is present on the anterior aspect of the wrist with compression application if you are compressing the anterior aspect of the wrist so there you guys can notice the tenderness positive test is positive phalanx test tinel sign or for sensory we can check the two point discrimination test diagnosis is confirmed by ct scan or mri and we can do electrodiagnostic testing like nerve conduction test uh, te velocity testing we can do for the patient as per the prescription of your neurophysiologist let's learn tendon injuries first we are going to see decure vence disease in that abductor polysis longus and extensor polysis previous tendons are inflamed at wrist first dorsal compartment so because of that a patient may have pain age is 50 years if patient is having acute case so onset is insidious and if it is in chronic stage so onset is gradual mechanism of injury this disease occurred due to the overuse of your thumb, especially radial or ulnar deviation of your wrist. For example, people are doing hammering, scraping the wallpaper, kneading, using scissors, tailors, they use uh, scissors daily. So in these people, recurrence disease is most common. Obser on observation, we can see that swelling present at the lateral aspect of your thumb. Now we are going to see symptoms. If patient has waited long time, so they may not be able to carry heavy load, pain over the anatomical snuff box and decreased grip strength, thumb extension can aggravate the symptoms, patient active range of motion for thumb flexion and ulnar deviation is decreased, pain with passive range of motion in thumb, especially if patient is uh, doing uh, extension, so that may cause pain for them. Resisted isometrics, pain with resisted abduction and extension of your thumb. Tenderness is present over the radial aspect of your wrist. Uh, in this kind of the patient, they have pain because uh, their tendon is already inflamed and that is also affecting your flexor tendon sheath. So this kind of the patient have a problem with the thumb flexion. 
एंड एज वी नो दैट द बेसिव रेंज ऑफ मोशन पेशेंट में हैव पेन एट द दम एक्सटेंशन बिकॉज इन बेसिव रेंज ऑफ मोशन वी आर गोइंग टू सी योर नॉन कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल एलिमेंट सो पेशेंट में हैव पेन ऑन एक्सटेंशन एंड रजिस्टर्ड आइसोमेट्रिक वी आर यूज टू डिटरमाइन द कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल टिश्यू लाइक मसल एंड टेंडन सो पेन विथ रजिस्टर्ड अपडक्शन एंड एक्सटेंशन ऑफ योर दम your abductor pollicis longus muscle is affected and then we can see that in this kind of the patient they have a problem with anatomical snuff box also the special test we are going to use a flinkelstein test and diagnosis that confirmed by mri or special test we have to differentially diagnose this condition with scaphoid fracture or c6 radiculopathy Especially in these cases, given the disease is we notice that pain on the anatomical snuff box. If patient is having scaphoid fracture, so they may have problem on the radial side of your wrist near anatomical snuff box. And in C6 radiculopathy, there will be sign and symptoms of your muscles affection toward the second metacarpal uh, bone. So we have to differentially diagnose this. Let's see flexor and extension tendon injury. So if patient is having flexor tendonitis, mostly it is common in 20 to 50 years of the age. Forceful gripping, moving your fingers in extreme range of motion that may cause flexor tendonitis. Sign and symptoms: If flexor carpi ulnaris is involved, this is the most commonly affected uh, muscle tendon in flexor tendon injury. So patient may have pain with wrist flexion and ulnar deviation. Range of motion assessment. If patient is having flexor tendinitis, passive range of motion testing, pain with extension of the elbow and extension of your wrist. Registered isometric test is positive with pain in wrist flexion. Tenderness is present at the PC form if flexor carpi ulnaris is involved. Special test is not specified for this flexor tendinitis. Now we are going to see extensor tendinitis. For extensor tendinitis, patient is having a problem in the age of 20 to 50 years. If they are doing prolonged exertion, static position of their wrist or they are using vibratory instrument that may cause them mechanical stress or other mechanical stress also lead to extensor tendinitis. Sign and symptoms that depends on tendon involvement. If extensor pollicis longus is affected, that decreased thumb flexion, pain is present, swelling, crepitus as the Lister's tubercle is present. Range of motion assessment for extensor tendinitis. First, passive range of motion, pain with finger flexion combined with radial or ulnar deviation if extensor carpi ulnaris is involved. Resisted isometric test is positive with pain in wrist extension. If extensor indices proprius is involved, so that time we can notice tenderness over dorsal compartment of wrist. And special test for extensor indices proprius muscle, we are going to apply resistance to the index finger. So index finger um, is going for extension, that time we have to apply resistance and we have to hold a wrist in flexion position. Now if we are going to see mallet finger. There might be rupture or avulsion of extensor tendon at the insertion at distal interphalangeal joint. This diagram we can notice that our extensor tendon is ruptured here near the insertion of distal interphalangeal joint. Mechanism of injury it's especially patient is uh, doing forceful distal phalanx flexion that may cause rupture of your extensor tendon or that may cause the fracture avulsion fracture of your distal phalanx also this is most common in uh, athlete like baseball catchers or uh, football receiver who receives the football and uh, in baseball so that uh, that patient may have a forceful distal phalanx flexion so that cause extensor tendon rupture Ob on observation we can notice the flexion deformity of a distal interphalangeal joint range of motion assessment active range of motion is affected so active loss of your extension of distal interphalangeal joint let's learn trigger finger this is most common finger problem that cause uh, due to inflammation of uh, inflammation and narrowing of annular pulley 
and that cause catching, clicking, pain and loss of finger motion. Most commonly that is uh, affected in the uh, woman than men and uh, it is common in the age of 50 years. Mechanism of injury, disproportion of uh, flexor tendon and its sheath. It's mostly affected in diabetic patients. Observation, uh, we can notice that your finger is uh, stuck in flexion position. Active range of motion testing, uh, active range of motion, there might be decrease or no active finger extension. Passive range of motion is full and pain free. Uh, registered isometric that is strong and pain free. We can confirm this with the help of MRI or like CT scan that will confirm their diagnosis. Ulnar collateral ligament injury. This is also known as a gamekeeper's thumb or squire's thumb. Definition, sprain or rupture of ulnar collateral ligament at the thumb. This is also known as a squire's thumb. Age of onset is very. Mechanism of injury, patient may have hyperextension or hyperabduction of your thumb. Uh, if he is going for skiing, so this is very common. Aggravating factor is thumb extension. We can observe a swelling at the ulnar aspect of your thumb. Sign and symptoms. Patient typically complains pain and tenderness on the ulnar side of the uh, metacarbophalangeal joint. Range of motion. Pain with uh, passive hyperabduction of your thumb. Special test is uh, positive like uh, ulnar collateral ligament stress test is positive uh, for your thumb tenderness over the ulnar side of your thumb and we can diag uh, diagnose this condition with the help of MRI let's learn Duputrin's contracture or palmar fasciitis definition development of nodules in the palmar digit and digital fascia or the contracture of palmar fascia that adheres to your skin this is most common in women than men. Age of onset is uh, greater than 40 years. Mechanism of injury, diabetes or trauma. On observation, we can notice that your palm skin is um, thickened. Sign and symptoms. Most commonly, this is affected uh, metacarpophalangeal joint and proximal interphalangeal joint, especially fourth and fifth finger in non diabetic patient and third and fourth in diabetic patients. Let's continue the sign and symptoms. We can notice the nodule on the palmar aponeurosis on the ulnar side of your palm. Pain is absent but patient can't extend his finger and uh, their finger is in flexion contracture. For example, the metacarpophalangeal joint flexion is greater than proximal interphalangeal joint. Range of motion assessment, decrease finger extension and active range of motion. Resisted isometric is strong and pain free and uh, special test. Patient, if uh, we ask patient to keep their palm straight on the uh, flat surface, so he may not be able to keep his palm straight. And like this, their finger will bend. We can confirm this with the help of my MRI or CT scan. Let's learn jersey finger. The rupture of flexor digitorum profundus tendon from its insertion in the distal phalanx. Mechanism of injury. The football players when their finger is um, flexed especially like this and that is scored in the jersey while the athlete is attempting to make the tackle therefore this is known as jersey finger there is forceful passive extension that is applied while flexor digitorum profundus muscle is contracting and that cause this type of rupture special test Hold your metacarpophalangeal joint and proximal interphalangeal joint in full extension. Then ask patient to actively attempt their finger flexion. They are flexing their uh, distal interphalangeal joint. So they are not able to do that. So test is positive for that patient. Now we are going to see triangular fibrocartilage complex problem. Mechanism of injury. Fall on outstretched hand with supination. Sign and symptoms, patient may have medial wrist pain, especially that is increased with end range, supination, pronation, forceful gripping activities. 
Tenderness is present at the posterior or dorsal anatomical depression and through the distal ulnar head and special test like load test is positive for triangular fibrocartilage complex problem and this is um, specially diagnosed with the help of MRI. Let's learn deformities. First we are going to see uh, rheumatoid arthritis deformity, swan neck deformity. In swan neck deformity, there will be contracture of your intrinsic muscle of the hand and dorsal subluxation of your lateral ten extensor tendon. With mechanism of injury, rheumatoid arthritis, trauma or degeneration. On observation, we can observe that flexion of your MCP, metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion of your distal interphalangeal joint and hyperextension of your proximal interphalangeal joint. Let's see botanial deformity, rupture of central tendon and slip of extensor hood. The mechanism of injury is rheumatoid arthritis, trauma and degeneration. On observation, we can observe that due to damage to common extensor tendon, the central tendon here, the central tendon slip insertion and that requires extra effort to extend the joint that cause hyperextension of your distal interphalangeal joint and extension of your metacarpophalangeal joint and distal interphalangeal joint and flexion of your proximal interphalangeal joint let's learn aptum deformity in aptum deformity, thinner muscle vesting is there and your first digit that comes dorsally until it comes in the line of your second digit. This is most commonly involved in median now injury. Diagnosis procedure is electrodiagnostic testing. Now we are going to see fractures. First is Collis fracture. In Collis fracture, the fracture of distal end of the radius with posterior dorsal displacement of distal fragments here um, this is occurred due to fall on outstretched hand injury deformity this is like a dinner this is dinner fork so the patient hand will become like a dinner fork and the posterior displacement of the distal fragment of uh, radius with a distal sh um, with radial shift of wrist and hand Diagnosis by x-ray and the second is Smith fracture. In Smith fracture, there is complete uh, fracture of uh, distal radius with anterior or palmar displacement of distal fragment. The most uh, mechanism of common uh, injury is uh, fall on back or flexed hand. Deformity is common is garden spade deformity. This is garden spade. So this kind of deformity is very common. This is diagnosed with the help of x-ray. Let's learn scaphoid fracture. Mechanism of injury fall on outstretched hand. Symptoms pain on posterior or dorsal side of the wrist. Tenderness over the anatomical snuff box, complication, avascular necrosis of a proximal scaphoid segment because here your radial, now, uh, radial artery will supply and if it is um, affected, so there will be avascular necrosis. Special test, Watson test is positive for scaphoid fracture and we have to differentially diagnose this with the Kuhn's disease because same area we have pain in that diagnosis. We can confirm this with the help of x-ray. In this x-ray, we can notice that this is a fracture of your scaphoid and this is radial artery. This is supplying the um, scaphoid bone, but if it is fractured, so that may affect and lead to vascular necrosis. Let's learn lunate dislocation. Most common uh, injury, mechanism of injury is fall on outstretched hand. Special test, Murphy's test swelling at the lunate we can confirm this with the help of uh, x-ray in this uh, lunate dislocation uh, if patient is falling on the fallen outstretched hand so that time your this lunate is dislocating and lastly we are going to see boxers fracture boxers fracture is fracture of fifth metacarpal bone especially in the 
boxers who are going to uh, who are boxing uh, doing boxing with the other players so uh, their fifth metacarpal is most commonly injured mechanism of uh, injury flexion deformity at a distal interphalangeal joint we can confirm this with the help of x-ray thanks for watching and for future videos don't forget to subscribe if you have any doubts related to topics in physical therapy exams please let me know in my comment section so i can make a series of the videos on that till that time stay positive bye bye